If you're struggling with your vitality, energy, mood, focus, or sleep, this podcast is for you. Your host, Dr. Ann Sung, ER doctor and airspace flight surgeon, will help you reach for the stars and remove the barriers or blockades that have been holding you back from living your best life. If you've been challenged by your health, relationships, or productivity, then it's time for a breakthrough. So here's your host, Dr. Ann Sung. Welcome to It's Not Rocket Science Show. I'm your host, Dr. Ann Sung. In this episode, I'd like to talk about my journey in the podcast creation. Uh, and we'll talk about the cost, the initial steps I took, the lawyers I spoke to, how I hired a podcast marketer and a producer, like a creator, essentially. And then we're going to talk about some of the supplies, the hosting accounts I had to get, um, we'll talk about the recording itself, the podcast recording portion, and we'll talk about post-production. So essentially, it, I will list out for you a series of action steps that I took and some of the costs associated with it when uh, I decided to begin this podcast. And so let's go ahead and dive in. I first had the, the idea uh, after meeting a podcast creator and a marketer at a Mind Valley conference early 2020, actually before COVID hit. And that idea had been in my head for about a year before I actually uh, took action on it. Because at that time, I was uh, busy finishing the Aerospace Medicine Fellowship. And also, uh, I went to Russia after I was hired on as a fly surgeon by NASA. So it took some time, but that idea had been brewing in my head for about a year. And finally, in 2021, I decided to take the steps and just go for it because I wanted to make my voice heard. I learned all these things um, about productivity, about health, and about you know mindset. And it is just a more effective way for me to share what I've learned with the world. And I had to get over my fear of speaking to the public, of you know really not being afraid to be my authentic self because. You know, if people, all I can do is be me. And I just think that that's actually the number one step to when you are creating a podcast. Don't be afraid of being yourself, speaking up on what you believe in, speaking your truth. And don't like think about what other people are going to think of you because as long as your intentions are true, then there's nothing to worry about. If you're doing and saying things you believe in, then there's nothing to worry about. You're just being yourself. So I think that's step one when you're deciding to start a podcast. And then later on, um, I actually did this later. I spoke to a lawyer way later, but I would suggest actually speaking to a lawyer ahead of time in the very beginning. Because when you, you know, you you think about your podcast ideas, and you know, for me as a physician. I need to decide whether I'm going to be hosting this podcast more as a physician or a coach. And I am not giving medical advice and I'm more like a coach and not giving advice as a doctor or physician. So after speaking with a lawyer, uh, Lisa Fraley was who I spoke with. And we decided that, you know, in all of the naming and the, the, the website, you, I cannot put Dr. Ann Sung on there. I can put my credentials like MD and MPH, Master of Public Health, but I and I can't do doctor so and so because it's implying I'm giving advice or uh, talking as a physician, and so that that has other legal ramifications. And I didn't do this uh, consultation until way later when the logo's been made, the website's been made, and I had to go back and change like take out doctor from everything. So I would suggest speaking to a lawyer, deciding whether you're going to be a coach or a physician, if you are a physician, and speaking with a lawyer to make sure you have the right disclaimers to protect yourself um, and the right privacy terms and uh, all the documents that you need for your website. Number two, I would highly suggest hiring someone to help you guide you through the process. Um, I hired the podcast marketing coach and creator, and it cost $10,000 to produce and create the first five episodes. Though that includes, you know, everything starting from scratch. It's like a turnkey podcast creator um, company. 
And I would say when you're looking to hire someone to help you, definitely you got to talk to their references, at least three references. And it would be better if it's somebody in your field, of course. And then number two, you would look at their professionalism, of course, um, their timeliness, uh, punctuality, and um, who's working on the team. You look at their deliverables and you make sure you understand the deliverables that they're going to give you. Like, are how many edits are they going to be doing? Are they going to be doing the show notes for you? Are, how are they doing the handovers for you if they're handing over things to you? Um, are they going to do, be doing audio, video editing and any social media posts for you? So all of those things are different items that people can offer. And it's just very important to look at the final deliverables uh, list initial on the initial console and make sure you really understand basically what all it entails. So, and then after I hired my marketing coach, then the first thing really was to talk about what, what is my passion or what is the topic I want to discuss. And I started, you know, there's a lot of things I'm passionate about, but really what it boils down to is productivity. It's on health and it's on deep relationships, creating deep lasting relationships. And it's, you know, a lot, a lot goes into it, like functional nutrition, longevity, uh, mindset, um, like morning routines, habits, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, really what it all boils down to are those three topics. And so now that we have those three topics, we go ahead and talk about the pain points. Like what problems are you trying to solve with your podcast? And we list out those pain points. And those are the pain points that we're going to be using on the, on the website and also the podcast about information section. So, you know, for health, a lot of times it's like we lack energy. We can't get up without needing coffee or some sort of caffeine. We can't last through the whole day. We can't spend time with our kids or uh, our friends after work or productivity. We're distracted all the time. We can't ever focus. We can't finish what we want to do, or we don't even have the motivation of what we want to do. And then also relationships. A lot of times we, you know, relationships with ourselves, being true to ourselves, and relationship with our family, our loved ones, a lot of times there are friction there. There's long lasting friction there that takes a lot of forgiveness, a lot of compassion, a lot of active listening, nonviolent communication. So those are some of the pain points I dive into on my website. And then after that, you want to uh, think about your ideal target audience and how you can help them. So when I think about my ideal target audience, it's almost like an audience like me who wants to learn more. Professionals, high performers already, they want more in life after they are already successful by measure of you know, the world, but they feel like there's something missing that they're not fully complete or happy. They want to be able to produce more, to achieve more. They want to have loving connections, deep relationships with others and colleagues. I would say it's somebody who is probably in their 20s to 40s, a female professional who wants to be able to have self-care for herself, joy and happiness for herself, and be able to give to her family and be thriving professional as well and thrive in her work and be successful in her work. So um, you can get very, very specific about your target audience as well. You can even you know, have the location where they live, their exact age, their exact profession. So it's kind of like the avatar. You want to think about your avatar. And then um, after that, you think about, yes, the problem that you are going to solve for them. And for me, I decided that I am the person who can help people create time, create vitality, create deep relationships so that they can achieve peak performance and fulfillment in life. And then after deciding on the topic, all those pain points, the next thing that I did was that I picked the color theme for my website and I picked green and white because it has to do with health and wellness. And I picked, um, the title actually was an idea from my podcast marketing coach. And I would say go to the trademark website um, and search for your podcast title that you come up with to see whether um, it's been trademarked or not. And if it hasn't, it would be a good idea to do it. And 
also look up the domain name to make sure that it hasn't been taken. I pick it's not a rocket science show because it was free. And I also um, picked the uh, domain of Ansung MD as well, just to make sure I have that. And Dr. Ansung, just to make sure I have that covered. And then they would use the title of your podcast and the color theme to create your logo and also a banner for the website. Um, I got the website domain for about $12 each domain. And then the next step would be to write a short bio or a, and then a long bio for the website. Who you are, why should they listen to you, what you're passionate about. And then in my long bio, I discuss why I created this podcast. And then following that, I created a free gift for others so that when they come to the website, they will be able to receive like a free gift for me. It's, a, it's the principle of reciprocity. And then, so what my idea at the time was to create a productivity course, a mini course uh, for seven days, but initially it was a PDF, but I thought it would be more impactful that when people can hear from me. So I recorded seven days worth of video place them on YouTube that's unlinked. And I hired someone uh, to create a MailChimp campaign. So essentially when the customers enroll, when they go on the website, they'll see free productivity or a free gift um, on how to two, three X your productivity in half the time, three power action steps. And they put in their email and then every single day they will receive the email with the link to corresponding day of the course. So I have over I believe I've over delivered in terms of value and providing a seven day course delivered to email every day without the uh, listeners having to like log in anywhere to listen. And then, so that's my free gift. And also the next thing you want to think about is creating an irresistible offer and an amazing, amazing experience for the audience so that if they leave a review, they will be able to enter to win this experience with you. So for me, I created a VIP day with me where I'm going to look at every aspect of their life and see where it is imbalanced and see how we can take steps in optimizing their whole entire life. And the this is usually not offered to anyone. I don't see anyone for this. So this is a very rare access for people to be able to talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. So that is what I created. And then we're going to move on to supplies and hosting accounts. So those are kind of the intellectual uh, work that you have to do uh, to cr creative work, essentially. Pain points, podcast title, logo, banner, uh, your bio, writing bio, sh long and short, and creating a gift, writing you know, the ideas of a gift, and then creating an amazing VIP experience. Now on to supplies and uh, the hosting accounts that you will get. Uh, I printed this banner um, from Office Max. It's three feet by 1.6 feet and it costs about $14. And then some of the other supplies, of course, the microphone I have, I have the Audio-Technica ATR2100X. It has a USB that can connect. It's a cardioid dynamic microphone and that costs about $99. I also have the microphone windscreen that costs uh, $7 for five of these. And I've only used one so far. The microphone stand, and that costs about 14. That essentially will hook it up to your desk so and you can move the microphone however you wish. And a shock mount so that if you accidentally bang your desk, it's not translated to the sound in the microphone. And that costs about $13. A travel case, if you plan on traveling with your microphone and doing interviews, that's about $14. And I initially recorded with a webcam on my Mac, then my webcam broke. And I got from recommendation, the Logitech Brio 4K Ultra HD business webcam. And that costs about $172. And I believe the quality is much, much better than my Mac webcam anyway. So it was a good thing maybe that it broke so that the quality can be better for YouTube. And I also got a ring light that sits in front of me. When you have better lighting, the video just looks so much better. And that cost about 
So all in all, the actual supplies cost me about $357. Now that's the actual supplies. Now you want to open up some of your accounts. So if you don't have social media accounts like Instagram, YouTube, um, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, then you open them up and then you make sure you promote yourself, podcast show hosts, the name, the podcast website name, et cetera, et cetera. And the Zoom account, you'll, I record on a cloud. So I obtained a professional Zoom account so I can record onto cloud. And that's about 160 per year, which equals to about 13 a month. And you'll get a hosting website account for your podcast. So you will submit to the hosting website account and they will distribute through all the platforms like Spotify or Apple Podcasts or uh, Google Podcasts. And that costs about $49 a month. I also have a Fusebox player, but there are a lot of others out there, a player that's on your website that connects to your episodes that so that when the clients or the listeners go, they will be able to just listen off of your website. And that costs me $190 a year, which is about $16 a month. So all in all, from the accounts, monthly recurring uh, costs is about $78 a month for me. And this is not including the production, the post-production costs. Now, we're going to move on to the podcast recording itself. So you want to determine the length of the podcast. And depending on your topic, of course, and depending if you're interviewing someone. For me, I initially started with small topics because I was modeling Jim, Quick, um, pot, Jim Quick's podcast for like small bullet points, actionable points. And that it worked well for me initially to start. And then when I started interviewing some people, it took a lot of times uh, about 30 minutes and then took an hour to really dive deep. So I determined that typically for my interviews, I am going to have about 35 to about an hour length. And for my own podcast episodes that I'm speaking, my ideal time is probably going to be 30 minutes or a little bit longer because I think what I'm going to be moving towards, it's diving deeper into a topic as well. And also the production, the post-production, many of them are up to 60 minutes and the pricing doesn't really change if it's shorter. So it's better for me if I have a longer, um, like, the podcast with more details and to dive deeper. So, and then I took a, a while back before I started the podcast, I took a public speaking class um, on Mind Valley, and it was really enlightening to understand how to use different tones, different volumes, uh, pauses to speak to your audience. And also how to speak to your audience while looking at the camera instead of looking at yourself like this. So it, it does take some practice to look at the camera. And when I initially started, I had a post-it right next to the webcam that says look here. And I had a post-it that has the summary or the outline of what I want to talk about. So I would suggest taking a public speaking class, even just online and I, I think it would really serve you well, especially if you have to give presentations anyway, and, and learning how to organize your thoughts, learning how to not read off of your, your outline, but just know like how to transition and how to speak based off of something in your head, if that makes sense. So then you would uh, record as your first episode, you can either record an introduction episode, just what, who you are, why you started this podcast, and you can record then episode one, um, which is for me, I recorded something on imposter syndrome, which was something I had to overcome. And it was huge for me. I combined the introduction and then imposter syndrome in one. But I think for the future, I probably would do the introduction as a separate of short episode. Now, you can do it however you like, of course. And then you want to record a disclaimer for the end of the episode if you have one. Um, so my disclaimer is essentially this podcast it does not substitute medical advice. It's not medical advice and doesn't substitute for uh, physicians or other health professionals' opinion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you pick your intro and outro music and make sure that the music has the right licensing and you can purchase this 
um, one time fee and that, and that will work. And you can either record your own intro, like introduce yourself. Here is your host, Dr. Ann Sung, or, you know, a little bit about what this podcast is about. You can have somebody else record it for you, which is what I did, or you can record it yourself. Now, regarding interviews, you can reach out to people you already know for interviews, or you can ask for referrals. So I interviewed uh, somebody that my podcast creator uh, worked with and thought would be a good interviewee for me, that who that he was my first interviewee. And then later on, I reached out to my coach. Uh, I reached out to the very successful people that I knew, like a real estate uh, real estate investor and also a real estate construction company, uh, agent company, uh, hard money lending company, uh, Kakoa Lewin. He, he, to me, was successful in my opinion. So I interviewed him. And then you can get referrals from those other people and you just kind of snowballs. It's pretty awesome. And then when you're interviewing someone, I would have them sign a guest media release form. Essentially, they're releasing the rights to you that you can use this audio for, you know, edit it on your own uh, for social media, for marketing reasons. And now for me, because I'm affiliated with a government institution, with a university, I actually have a media consent form that I have. If I'm being interviewed, I have the interviewer sign it. Essentially, they can only use the content for their podcast episode only and anything related to the podcast episode, like marketing or social media posts. But if they're going to use any of the content for any other purposes than the podcast, then they will need my consent just because I need to see that it is not endorsing anything, which I usually don't want to endorse any brands at all whatsoever. And if they're the brands I use, I will provide multiple other brands or other hosting, um, other companies to use if possible. So basically everything I have listed, all the brands I have listed for you, again, not endorsing them. Those were recommended to me. And I, there are many, many options that you can pick and just pick the best one for you. But I just wanted to tell you what I've uh, used so far and what's worked for me. And again, they're not endorsed by university or any government institution. Now, uh, moving on to post-production. So I found a post-production company after the five episodes were created, they were turned over to me. The show was transferred to my Podetize account. And I found a post-production company that would essentially do a lot of things for about $150 episode. So they will do audio video editing. They will do the social media um, post. Like they will create the, the logo or the image that has like title, put the interviewer ease photo on there take out some quotes on there. And then they also create a short video clips to uh, promote for promotion purposes on social media accounts. And they'll take the transcription of the episode. They'll write the show notes from there, have a summary, and they'll any links or resources that you've talked about, they'll put it at the bottom and have links to them. And then they will also post all of these video clips, the social media posts across your media platforms. And that's, that was an extra charge, but I thought that, you know, I really needed to save time and have the experts post these for me because there's going to be a lot of posts. So um, that costs about $150 per episode up to 60 minutes. And another website that I had to uh, obtain uh, membership is Hootsuite because a Hootsuite will help you post across multiple platforms. And I decided to do Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and, um, and I think that's about it for now. And Twitter, a Twitter is going to be a shorter post. And now with the post-production done, you want to make sure you have that disclaimer ready at the end of the, each episode summary. Uh, show notes, and also on your website. And your website also will need to talk about uh, the website, have a link to website terms and conditions to protect your intellectual property, and also a website privacy policy. So if the audience give you their email that they're going to be sure that their email is not going to be sold to other parties, essentially. So 
that is essentially a, my journey and all the steps I took and、uh, approximate cost of everything that I've done so far. And I hope that's helped you in some way to understand the process and what it took to start from my first initial steps to、uh, going live.、It、took about.、Um, I would say ten months or so, but some of it is because of me. Because sometimes I had to give the deliverables, and depending on your time and how busy you are, you might not be able to give the deliverables that quickly. And so, again, initial steps: speak to a lawyer, hire a podcast creator, a marketing team to help you, and you want to think about the passion and topics you want to discuss. What are your customers' or ideal target audience or avatars' pain point? How do you? What problems do you help them solve? And then you'll be picking your color logo, creating the banner. Oh, and also you want to get professional photos taken for your website if you don't have any already. Get your website domain, write your short and long bio, think of a gift to the audience when they come to your website, and think of an amazing VIP experience if they,、uh, for them to have a chance to win if they write you a review. And regarding the supplies, you want to get your microphone, microphone stand, the wind、um, screen, the shock mount, travel case, webcam if you need one, a ring light, and you can print a banner for your podcast if you're doing video recording. And open up all your social media accounts. You want to get your Zoom cloud recording, whatever you want to use, your podcast hosting website, your online website player account, and Then you move on to the podcast recording portion. Be a good idea to think about、uh, online public speaking、uh, class or training course. Determine how long you want it to be, how frequently you want to post, and you start recording an intro episode. Most important topic for episode one, and you can record your own intro outro over the intro outro music, or have somebody else do it for you. And make sure that the music has correct licensing for legal purposes, and start reaching out to people for interview. And make sure you have a media、uh, release form and a consent form if you need it. Then find, make sure you find somebody who fits your post production needs. To if you want somebody to edit everything, have the show notes, have the social media post ready, have the video clip ready, and post on all the social media websites. And、the last thing, really, spread the word. Don't be afraid. Spread the word to your friends, your family, your loved ones. Because I mean, this is why you created the, the podcast, right? Yeah, so that the world can hear you. You don't want to be shy about. Because I had to go through that. I was, you know, I, I wanted it to be perfect and ready before I spread it to the world. But even then, I don't know if I want the whole world to hear, which is kind of strange. That goes back to another thing of not be afraid to be your authentic self and just. Just it serves the world if they can hear your voice. Like I try to think that you know, if I don't spread this, then I'm being selfish essentially. So make sure you have the correct disclaimer on your website and your podcast episodes, privacy policy, and terms and conditions on your website, and you can speak to a lawyer about that as well. So I really hope that this has served you well. All the links, all the equipment I have listed will be in the show notes. Please go to. It's not rocketsciencehow dot com, and I would be very grateful if you could subscribe and also leave a review for the podcast so that I know how to up level this podcast for you. What other topics do you want me to talk about? So again, thank you for sharing your time with me, and remember, everything we need is within us now. That's it for today's episode. Head on over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. One lucky listener every single week that posts a review in iTunes will win a chance in the grand prize drawing to win a private VIP day for a health and life makeover with Dr. Ann Sung herself. Then be sure to head on over to It's Not Rocket Science Show dot com and pick up your free gift from Dr. Sung. Then join us on the next episode.